Another day, another GPU launch. And today, it's all about the RX 6700 XT. And I've got six of them. Let's do this. Yo, dog, I heard you like RGB, so I put RGB on your RGB. Thanks, dog. But this is my show. Go back to Pimp My Ride. The new NZXT Kraken X63 RGB now with two 140mm RGB fans with an even larger infinity mirror display and new 7th gen Acer Tech pump. And with a six year warranty, you've got nothing to worry about. Get your RGB on. Link in the description to find out more. Isn't that right? So firstly, I wanna get it out of the way. Yes, I have all of the GPUs. That's why you won't be able to buy them. So now that I've got that out of the way, normally I would jump straight into the benchmarks as soon as possible, but normally I wouldn't have six of the same bloody card. I say the same because, well, they're all 6700 XTs, but from different brands, and I'm sure they will have different price points as well. Not that I've actually been told any prices apart from the reference model that's coming in with a suggested retail price of $479. But the keyword there is suggested. So much of this comes down to retailers, distributors, scalpers, and everything in between. So you can probably guess that it will come in probably higher than $479. I'm sorry, but that is just the state of the way that things are at the moment. Now, speaking of coming in higher than this, we've actually got five other cards from AMD's add-in board partners. And we will go through kind of the specs and everything of every single card and exactly how they perform. But again, it's safe to say that being custom models, they're likely gonna be coming in higher than the AMD reference pricing. So let's talk specs. Now, while we have GPU Z screenshots for each card, you will have to remember that they were taken at idle and the frequencies may be different as with AMD's game frequencies and boost frequencies, they do actually have an up to value. So it will change depending on the load that's actually put directly onto the card. So it's just worth keeping that in mind when you look at the figures and think, hold up Andy, this just doesn't add up. So the AMD reference card is what everything is based on, and that comes with a base frequency of 2,321 megahertz, a game frequency of up to 2,424 megahertz, and a boost frequency up to 2,581 megahertz. The keyword being here is up to, as our GPU Z screenshots do show what they were actually boosting to at idle. Now, you have to take this into kind of, you know, having various different factors such as thermals, the application being run. You will actually see them cards fluctuate depending on those factors. Now, the other cards all come in with slightly different frequencies. And while this information wasn't actually available to us at the time of filming, product pages from all of these manufacturers should now be updated with these figures after actually releasing this video, after the, the technical launch. Now, it is worth noting that a higher boost clock doesn't actually necessarily mean a faster card, as if a card with a lower clock can actually run cooler for a longer period of time, then it will sit in a boost state for a prolonged amount of time, compared to a card that may only spike up to those top boost speeds before then consequently kind of clocking back down due to factors like thermals, power, all that kind of good stuff. Now, to give ample screen time to each brand, because as I mentioned, we've got six cards, I've got all of them. To give kind of fair ample screen time to each brand, we wanna go through each one as quickly as possible before we can actually get into those juicy benchmark figures. So, starting with a reference card. It's a dual slot card that's 267 millimeters long and has a dual fan design. It still looks like it was kind of, I don't know, designed by Team Rocket of Pokemon due to the logo, but overall I actually think it's pretty nice looking. The backplate wraps around the cooler, it has an 8-pin and a 6-pin power connector, the Radeon logo lights up red, and it has three display ports and one HDMI port. Now, it was announced at $479, but I'm actually hearing from sources it could be closer to $499 for launch. Moving on to the Asus Strix. So the Asus ROG Strix, I mean, this is, oh, it's huge. It's the same Strix design that we've seen on other 6000 series AMD cards from Asus and features the same triple fan design and will take up about two and a half slots inside your case. I mean, it does look like it means business, I've got to admit. It has the long RGB bar along the top that we've seen before and includes a full size backplate that's actually bigger than the PCB. It comes in at around 322 millimeters long, has two 8-pin power connectors, and the same three display ports and one HDMI. It's likely going to be the most expensive, but we've kind of come to expect that from Asus. It's just the Asus tax, the ROG tax, the Strix tax, whatever you want to call it, but you get what you pay for. 
The Gigabyte Gaming OC, it's the same as every other gaming OC card. If it's not broke, don't fix it, I guess. It's just over two slots thick and comes in around 284 millimeters long. Has a standard triple fan design that we've all kind of come to expect and has an eight pin and a six pin power connector. So slightly less than some of the other cards. It has the smallest amount of RGB with the little bit on the logo, but you can control this or turn it off using Gigabyte software if you really want to. I hate their software. On the IO, they've gone with two display ports and two HDMIs just to mix things up a little bit. Pricing wise, I was actually hearing about $599, but after uh, researching into it a little bit more, I think it's gonna be closer to the uh, sort of reference card. The MSI Gaming X, uh, this is a chunky card and it weighs a fair amount as well, but kind of in a good way. You can tell it uses quality materials. It's gonna take up two and a half slots in your case and comes in at around 281 millimeters. Has two large fans and the design is full of edges and angles to make it edgy. Power wise, it has two eight pin connectors, a few splashes of RGB kind of here and there, but nothing over the top. And like the reference card has three display ports and one HDMI port. So this is a new one, the Hellhound. It's a whole new lineup from Powercolor and features a triple fan cooler with two big fans and one smaller one in the middle. It's just over two slots thick and comes in at around 312 millimeters. The fans actually have full on RGB, but the card actually has a switch on it so you can turn it off on the fly. Why do other brands not do this? I mean, seriously. It has two eight pin power connectors and the same like the reference card, three display ports and a single HDMI port. Lastly, we have the Nitro Plus from Sapphire. It's actually quite light. It's just over two slots thick and around 314 millimeters long. It has a triple fan cooler again with two larger fans and a smaller one in the middle. It features a small amount of RGB and it actually looks quite industrious and I kind of like that. It has an eight pin and a six pin power connector and like the other cards, apart from the Gigabyte, has three display ports and a single HDMI port. So I guess now you know what they look like and what features they have and, or don't necessarily have. What about the specs and the speeds? So spec wise, they are all the same. I'm gonna try not to bore you here because it's not very exciting. It has 64 ROPs, the same 2560 stream processors, the same 96 meg infinity cache and 12 gig of GDDR6 memory on a 192 bit memory interface. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. We can all read spec sheets, right? That what you will find with these cards is they all have different speeds and the joys of working on six different cards at once is trying to get all this information from every bloody brand. Now, while some provided the information, we weren't actually able to get it from everyone. So instead, we're just gonna show you the GPU Z screenshots for each card and product pages from each brand should actually have the figures after this video releases. It's Trust me, it's the easier way of doing it. If you didn't sense the sarcasm there, yeah, it was sarcasm. Now, while we do try and get this information to you, it's just not always possible. So, sorry guys. Now, with that out of the way, I can hear you all screaming at the screen and frantically scrubbing to get to those all important benchmark numbers. But kind of before we do, it is worth noting that we have updated our test bench a bit and all the parts that we're now using, because we are using 5000 series Ryzen now, are all linked in the description below. So yeah, without further ado, let's run those glorious benchmarks.
So let's break this up into segments, starting with how the 6700 XTs compare against each other. So performance is very similar across pretty much all game tests, with all the cards sitting within about two to three frames per second of each other. The main difference is gonna be the thermals and power of the cards, where we see the likes of the Azus Rog Strix take the lead at load temps, beating the other cards by a whopping 10 degrees, coming in at 54 degrees C. The reference card is still the hottest out of the stack, but this is kind of expected. It comes in at a toasty 23 degrees hotter than the Rog Strix at 77 degrees. When it comes to power consumption at load, we have the Power Color Hellhound, the newest card or newest range, and reference cards pretty much taking the cake, with the Hellhound edging out the reference 311 watts to 314, while all the other cards are on average about 20 to 25 watts more power hungry. And this is likely due to their kind of beefier coolers and extravagant RGB. So you also notice that we have enabled SAM or Smart Access Memory, and from our tests, we found it can offer a performance increase of anywhere between kind of eight to 15% on average in some titles. While other titles, it actually had, well, zero effect. We also noticed that the titles it did best in, it was already beating the 3060 from Nvidia and just kind of furthered this by, it does also help to kind of close that gap behind the 3060 Ti. Overall, there is some extra performance to be gained for those who are using Ryzen 5000 CPUs, at least in some games, and considering it's free and, well, fairly easy to set up these days in the BIOS, could actually be worth looking into if you're in that situation. It is also worth noting that Nvidia have resizable bar on the 3060, and maybe it's something that in the future we'll look at and kind of revisit, and then we can compare technology to technology. It's pretty much the same thing. So how does the 6700 XT compare to Nvidia? Well, in synthetic benchmarks, the 6700 XT kind of sits in the middle of the 3060 Ti and 3070. In gaming, it's generally on par with the 3060 Ti, but may fall behind by a, a few FPS in certain titles. Much like the 6800 series, we found that AMD seemed to perform better in DX12 and Vulkan titles, while Nvidia, Nvidia seemed to kind of do better in older titles. Now. I don't know about you guys, but I like playing newer games, so AMD, maybe you just have the edge there. What do you think? I know so much of it comes down to kind of retail pricing and of course stock availability, which I did address in another video, so definitely go and check that one out. But if you are looking for a 6700 XT and you have your heart kind of set on a specific model, I do feel that you can't really be picky. And with the way that things are, you may just have to settle with literally whatever you can get your hands on. But luckily, based on our testing, you can see that at least from a kind of performance standpoint, it doesn't really mean anything. When overclocking, maybe, and when inside a case, it may make more of a difference compared to our testing and how we used an open air test bench. And again, maybe it's something that we'll revisit in the future. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and let me know if, uh, I don't know, if things change, if stock and pricing, lo and behold, if it, if it gets to a normal level, what car would, would you actually be buying right now? 6700 XT or something completely different? Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later. Bye bye. I've got all the cards. I've got all the cards. Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>